Welcome to our review on electrical power. The first thing we actually need to know here then is what do we mean by the word power? So when we're talking about power in physics, we're referring to the rate of transfer of energy. Now it's given the unit of watts, which has the symbol of a capital W, but depending on the actual amount of power that we're talking, we may change watts into either kilowatts or megawatts. So if we're talking about a kilowatt, that's the same as a thousand watts, whereas a megawatt is the same as a million watts. So just remember those two conversions as well, because I have seen questions in the past where they referred to megawatts in power stations. And sadly, a lot of people don't remember those conversions to be able to then work out the correct answers. So we come on to two formulae we need to actually remember for the exam. So these ones won't be given to you on the paper. You've got to remember them. So power in watts is the potential difference times by our current and the energy transferred, which could be either joules or kilowatt hours, is the power in watts times by the time in seconds. So make sure you find a way to learn these actual formulae. Otherwise, you're really going to struggle when it comes to answering the questions in P3. So an example of the kind of question we could get here. A one kilowatt microwave oven works on a potential difference of 230 volts. Calculate the current through it. So first thing we know do is write down what we know. So the power is one kilowatt and potential difference is 230 volts. So remember one kilowatt is the same as a thousand watts. Then we know that current is our power divided by potential difference once we've rearranged our actual formula and then we can substitute in the values. So 1000 watts divided by 230 volts gives us a current of 4.3 amps. And again, just go careful that if in the question they've not given you units as part of your answer line, then you may well have a mark just for writing down the correct units. Then we come on to another formula that you need to know, or you can work this one out. So that is one of the nice things is that we can actually use the formula we already know in order to work this one out. So you can either learn that the power in watts is the current squared times resistance, or we could work it out because we know that power is potential difference times current. And we know that to calculate the potential difference, it's current times resistance. So that if you then put those together, use a few of your basic math skills here, then that tells us that power is the current squared times resistance. So whatever is easiest for you is the way to do this. So if you're really good at being able to rearrange equations and substitute bits in, then this one might be the way to do it. If however, you're far better at just learning things off by heart, then just remember that power is our current squared times resistance. So the kind of question you could get a small motor in a DVD player has a resistance of 50 ohms and a power of 5 watts. Calculate the current. Now, obviously, we can't just go straight into using our equation of power is potential difference times current because we just don't have the information. We only have power for that one. So we must therefore use the power is our current squared times resistance. So we've got resistance. We've got power. We need to calculate the current. Now, in order to do that, we do have to rearrange our equation so that that means that our current is the square root of power divided by resistance. Substitute in the values from the questions, 5 divided by 50, and then take the square root of that gives us 0.3 amps as our current. 